One of the most powerful features in Vim is macros. Now, what exactly is a macro? A macro is a way to record a sequence of events so that you can replay that sequence of events inside the text editor later. It basically makes doing really complicated tasks much easier. It is a way, in some cases, to make the impossible possible. That's our topic for the day, Vim macros. All right, so let's give an example of Vim macros in action. So today's video was inspired by one of our regular viewers, a guy named Peter. He uh, is a regular contributor to the channel. He often posts in the comments of my videos and a lot of other Linux YouTubers videos. Great guy, you guys probably are familiar with Peter. Anyway, he asked the question of how could he sort through the Arch Linux mirror list using something like a Vim macro? And it's a great question. So I've pulled up kind of a default Arch Linux mirror list. Any of you guys that have ever installed Arch Linux the Arch way, the command line install way, know that the default mirror list is not sorted by country. It's kind of random. You have servers from Japan, 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 Germany, United States, Germany, Brazil, Germany, United States, United States, Greece, Italy, Netherlands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's hundreds of servers, and they're not really organized in any. Uh, and they're not organized by country. So, how do you go through and delete all the servers you don't want and keep the servers you do want? If, for example, I'm in the United States, I only want servers in the United States, and I want to delete the rest. How do you do that? Well, in a standard text editor, it would be tedious. You would have to just go line by line, deleting the lines you don't want, keeping the lines you do want. But in Vim, because of macros, it makes this process so much easier. So basic usage is first, we have to start recording a macro. How do you do that? Well, you type Q on the keyboard, followed whatever key you want to assign that macro to. For this demonstration, I'm going to type Q1. And you see at the bottom here in Vim, it says recording at one. So we, we're assigning that macro to one on the keyboard. And from here on, everything I do is being recorded as a macro. So how do I want to attack this problem? There's probably a hundred different ways you can go about this. But me just kind of, you know, doing this on the fly, here's probably how I would do it. I would get into visual mode first. So I'm going to type Shift V for capital V to get into visual mode. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type slash for search. And then I want to search for this line. Hashtag, hashtag, space, United. Well, if I can type right, United States. And then hit enter to go the, the first line that starts with that. And then I want to back up one line, K, for up in Vim. K on the keyboard is up in Vim. To back up one line and then from here I think I just want to delete everything, right? Because I'm deleting everything that happens before that hashtag line that starts with United States. So D. And then what I want to do is J two times. J is down. And then repeat the process. So I think I'm done. I think if I quit recording the macro from here we're good. So I'm going to type Q on the keyboard which will quit recording the macro and then to run the macro you type the number of occurrences that you want to run the macro at the key you assign the macro to so in my case I'm gonna do this 40 times 40 at 1 and I think that actually worked let me escape because I'm still in visual mode let's get back into normal mode GG to go to the top of the document and yeah I think that successfully deleted every line in the mirror list other than the ones that had the hashtag United States comment above them. Let me scroll down just to make sure. All right, so the, the bottom three mirrors are not United States mirrors. Why did that happen? It's because the way I ran that macro, you know, it always stopped once it got to a line, hashtag United States. Well, these last three mirrors, they occurred after the last occurrence of the United States mirror. So manually, you know, you have to go in and just delete those lines. So I would just, you know, go up to France here and just DD six times. 
and or six dd <laughs> would be the easier way to do that and that's it then uh, colon wq for write and quit save it and you're good this is not my mirror list by the way this was just an example mirror list but colon wq for write and quit boom you're done now another example of vim macros in action if you want an example of here's a real world example of one i ran into a few months back so i have a gopher site so i have a gopher site that is at distro.tube so if i open this in the links terminal browser so if i open gopher colon slash slash distro.tube is the website this is my gopher page and if i arrow down a few times until i get to where i want to be i'm not sure my video archive i think is yeah hit enter and i'm going to go to 2018. i made a lot of videos in 2018. anyway this is that gopher page it's basically every video i made in 2018 and it's got a special format uh, the link to the video the title of the video the date of the video and then the description of the video right so that's, anyway i just wanted to show you the page now what does the code of that page look like well this is it this is the the code of that vim or that uh, gopher site here in vim and you see it the format watch this video and then the link and then the title then the date and then the description although the very first video i guess i didn't have a description for it but what if i wanted to rearrange things what if i wanted instead of the title to be above the date what if i wanted to m make the date above the title well you can imagine if i have hundreds of videos here in this particular list how tedious that could be if i didn't have something like vim macros so i'm going to go to the top of the document here and record a macro so i'm going to type q1 we're going to assign this to one again and you see at the bottom recording at one and now how do I want to attack this? I think I'm going to, let's search for date. So I'm going to slash capital D, A-T-E, followed by colon. I don't want to just do the word date. I want to do date followed by colon just so there's no confusion because the word date may actually appear in some of the video descriptions and that could really mess up our macro. All right, so I'm going to do that search, hit enter, and we're going to go to the first occurrence of date followed by a colon. And then what do I want to do? How about DD for delete? And then I want to K two times for up. And then I want to P for put. All right. And then I want to J for down. And then I want to do that however many times it would take to get to the end of this document. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the, the recording. So I'm going to Q. But here's the thing. I need to figure out how many occurrences I want to run this because if I run it a thousand times but there's only 200 videos in this list it's going to get to the end and then it's going to go back and keep running it and it's going to it, it could mess up the format I'm not positive it will but it could let's do it let's just run it and see if it does so I'm going to type a thousand at one a thousand at one and see if it just completely jacks up this document. Uh, it, everything kind of looks good, actually. Let me GG to get back to the top. Um, yeah, you know what? I think it worked. I think that worked just fine. Uh, if I capital G to get to the bottom of the top, bottom of the document. See how many lines are in this document. 2002 I think that's how many lines were in it before I don't think we messed anything up let me double check it I'm gonna U for undo and then I'm gonna go uh, yep 2000, 2022 so it didn't override anything it didn't you know so that was a pretty safe macro but you do have to be careful because sometimes the macros you're ru running if they're kind of complicated uh, it's a good idea to know exactly how many times you want that mac macro to execute because if you execute it too many times, you know, you could, you could really mess up your document. Anyway, that was just a couple of very quick and easy examples on Vim macros. There's plenty of documentation out there on the internet about Vim and about macros in particular. And if you are a Vim user or you're an aspiring Vim user, you really need to learn how to use macros because they're one of the things that makes Vim 
such a powerful text editor. Again, it kind of in some ways makes the impossible possible. Now, I know that's a bit of a stretch because could I have moved, rearranged the things in the two documents that I just showed you myself in a, a regular text editor? Yes, but it would take forever. Like that video list that I had, there's 200 and something videos on that page. If I had to go in there and manually move those lines, delete a line, paste it in the right spot, then go to the next video and do that. You know, I might spend half an hour or an hour, a full hour doing that, where that literally took seconds what I did with the Vim macro. Before I go, I'd like to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Ansem, First Chris, Second Chris, Dylan, George, Jack, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, Tony, and Willie. They're the producers of the show. Without these guys and their support, this show about Vim macros would not have been possible. The show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. You guys see all those names on the screen. They are the supporters of this channel. They help support my work over on Patreon. Again, without these guys, this show would not be possible. I want to thank each and every one of them. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.